And then the letterbox house, which is... Um, I put that in, remember that one? That, um, because it has a sort of funny affinity to this. It's different if you think about the Kimball, it's quite... Obj- it's very much an object. Um, and this letterbox house is very much about hierarchy, which I think this building was about, and that's why I think they're quite different. But this building is in Blairgarry, which is quite close to where the Climb Bottle House is, but it's actually more towards the Bay Beach side, so that's a sort of peninsula. Um, it's more in a sort of suburban context rather than the sort of um, heavily tea tree context, which you can see uh, on the Back Beach side in that um, Google Earth shot. Um, the building itself was uh, a bit of a peninsula, um, essentially um, sort of I guess, again, allowing for families to sort of come together or, or move apart and sort of worked around this central courtyard. It was, there were two blocks. One block was complete easement, so we couldn't, couldn't build on one block. We could only build on half of it. But it, when we did that um, uh, Templestowe Park Primary School, which was quite successful, when, when it was first painted, we did get all these sort of phone calls coming through which apparently went to the minister and then back through the department, which was people saying, I can no longer walk my dog down that street because that building is so horrible. And you, get, you start to sort of get a bit self-conscious. So when we came into this building, we thought, oh, well, we'll do the smallest elevation on the peninsula. So we thought, we'll just do the letterbox. And the number seven was, was to be the front elevation, which unfolded up into this two-storey building at the back, and our attempts to hide behind that letterbox, you can see they're a bit, you know, they're a bit desperate, but that was the idea. But uh, probably more seriously, it was probably about, um, about kind of... Uh, creating um, space. Yeah, creating space. Well, it was, a, it was an environment where, where space rather than, um, than physical form prevailed. So it was about allowing that space while still providing a building that somehow kind of interacted with the street. The building, again, unlike the Klein Bottle, which is probably, in a way, sort of complete in its nature, this is sort of a bit... It's contradictory. At the front, it seems to unfold from the seven, but when you go down the back, it's almost like this great sort of rand has been carved out of the seven, so they're completely different uh, techniques that we've sort of used at either end. And, as I say, it comes from this great tradition which about, in architecture, which is about hierarchy... Um, which we still think is really a valid thing to explore. There does seem to be a tendency these days more uh, towards creating objects or creating single systems that change around the building but apply to the, uh, as a single system. Um, but we still like that sort of sense of hierarchy of, of one uh, language working against another, and we think it, like it actually allows quite powerful um, urbanism. And so the building has... Um, has kind of an ordinary side, which could be, you know, any house on the peninsula, uh, and to have the, and then also has the extraordinary side, which is kind of apparently kind of carved out of um, that ordinariness. And people, um, people walk by this, even though it's not confronting on the street. It's actually very visible from the street, so you can look right into the house. You can see right into the uh, into the garden. And you often get people walking past with their families, taking the kids down to the Bay Beach, usually young families. And they feel the... compelled to comment. Yeah. Which we think is great because, you know, they're interacting with their environment and if we can cause that, well, then that's probably a good thing. Yeah. So it's usually little kids who think it's a boat or it's a wave. They yell out, what is it? Is it a boat? You know, is it a sand dune? Yeah. Which we quite like. So we're happy to engage with all those metaphors. The... Um, the structure itself is a series of box beams, um, which we also had this sort of other idea that they become, could become sort of uh, encoder of memory, so sort of a series of shells, which, you know, you could have all the sort of bric-a-brac that you collect while you're on those sort of beach holidays could be lined along there um, as a kind of encoder of memory, uh, as the other side of the house is really a sort of backdrop to play, so it also is another form of kind of reinforcing memory more metaphors, Jonah and the Whale. These shots were taken by um, John Gollings and he came along and removed all the, uh, all the stuff off the shelves. All the bric-a-brac. 
You thought that was a bit messy. Too messy for him. John Gollins is a famous Melbourne photographer. If, um, people don't know who he is. I don't think... We should have probably told him that, you know, actually the brick break was good and that was part of the idea, but... I think he wouldn't have cared. <laughs> um, and just, yeah, some construction shots. Box beams. So the main structure was these box beams and just sort of uh, clouded over that. 